I got made fun of so much. Everybody was like, dude, what did you do? Like, you just ruined your shirt. Let's say we were to start a streetwear brand. Can you take us through the process of how you might want to start? I don't think social media is as important as I used to think it was. It doesn't necessarily translate to more sales. So I think that there is three reasons why people buy clothing from like a smaller designer. It's either Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Passion, Passion Project, Project Japan. Japan. I'm Theo. And I'm Gia. And today our special guest is... Hi, I'm Shane. Yay! <laughs> Shane, so where are you from and how do you come to Japan and what do you do? So I'm originally from the suburbs of Chicago yeah. and I moved to Japan about almost five years ago. Uh, I, I was just traveling a lot and uh, I, I studied photography and I was, you know, going as many places as I could to take pictures. Uh, and I, I went to Nepal and while I was there, I was volunteering. I helped like rebuild schools cause they had an earthquake. And mm. during that experience, I got to do, I got to get some experience teaching English and I really liked it. So once I got back, I started looking for like English teaching jobs in other countries. And I thought Japan sounded sweet. I didn't really know much about it, but I came here kind of on a whim after college and, uh, I loved it. So I'm still here. You can tell that the set is a little bit different today mm. and we are also decked out in something different. So maybe you want to introduce what this is all about. Yeah, <laughs> I make clothing. That's that's my uh, that's my side hustle. That's my passion. I've been doing it since since I was in college and uh, I I was on a kind of a hiatus for a while because when I moved to Japan, I did the JET program, which okay. is like Japanese exchange teaching, which a lot of people use to get over here, but they send you anywhere. And I got sent to this like tiny little island in between Japan and Korea called Iki Island, where there's like mm -hmm. 20,000 people mm -hmm. and like end to end you could drive and it takes 20 minutes, like this tiny, tiny island. And I lived there for three years and- uh, Three years? Yeah, yeah. What's the was, closest city to Iki? Fukuoka. Oh, Fukuoka. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. And I was still making stuff and like, selling it online, but I just didn't have the same drive because I didn't have an artistic community there. Mm. So since I moved to Nagoya, uh, I did an event in October uh, that John John does. And, and uh, since then I've been able to, you know, meet artistic people here, find more events to do. And it's really like put a pep in my stuff and I've been back making stuff again. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, imagine 20,000 people is like a very small population for you to just sell clothing. Yeah, right? yeah. With Did anyone else speak style? English or, or? No, not really. I mean, oh, there wow. was like five people on the whole island <laughs> who spoke English and I knew all of them. And oh my like, gosh. I, I didn't know any Japanese when I came here. I like, yeah. I couldn't read hiragana, like nothing. So I learned it pretty fast because wow. I also had a lot of free time at work. So yeah. I just studied at work and then like tried my best to talk to people when I was out. And, it's a uh, trial by fire, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I I was worried to make stuff like this because like it's pretty horror themes. Like you know you got Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you got yeah. Frankenstein, you got like yeah. this guy's getting his head cut off. And like <laughs> I worked at a high school and mm. all of the teachers and like parents knew who I was, so like. I couldn't wear anything vulgar when I went out. Like every time I left my house, I saw somebody who knew who I was. So it was kind of kind of rough. Town, yeah. Small town vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Small town, popular. Yeah. yeah. Imagine yeah, you just walk walk out with the Frankenstein like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hoodie, yeah, yeah. You had to be you had to be careful. So and so yeah, I've noticed that you know all your your prints are very like horror themed or yeah. kind mm. of like movie film theme. So mm. where do you get your inspiration from? And yeah, exactly. And why do you uh, why do you choose like this subject matter to be like the prints on your on mm. your shirt? The reason I started making clothes is just because I wanted stuff to wear. Like I wasn't thinking about like really selling it or anything. Uh -huh. I was just like I I grew up watching horror movies and like listening to punk and stuff. And punk is so much about DIY and like customizing your stuff. So actually, the first thing I ever made was when I was in like elementary school. I love the movie Frankenstein. Like my dad, my dad showed me the old like 1930s black and white one when I was a kid, and I we have it on like VHS, and I watch it every year during around Halloween time. So I just like, I thought everybody liked stuff like that because that was my world, and uh, I drew that like, Boris Karloff is the name of the actor. I drew that image on like a piece of copy paper and like 
stapled it to a t-shirt when I was in like <laughs> elementary school. I just literally hit the stapler and uh, I got made fun of so much. Everybody was like, dude, what did you do? Like you just ruined your shirt. But now I still do that and I get paid for it. So yeah. who so came cool. out on top? That's the come up. Yeah. yeah. Hey there. If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please do so. You started creating shirts because those were the kind of clothes that you wanted to wear? Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I'm sure you probably have that feeling also. I also have that feeling where sometimes I'm like, there's this particular kind of design that I want on a t-shirt that I can't find anywhere else. Or mm. if I do, it's usually like way too expensive. Yeah. So I've always wondered whether it's possible to DIY my own like, you know, style. And I see that yeah. it's super like DIY. Like if you can look, I guess, if you can show the camera. So everything is Infamous. kind of like, yeah, it's like stitched or yeah, sewed. Yeah. So yeah. do you sew it or is it like some machine? Yeah, so I I never say that I like make well, I do say that I make clothes, but I don't make the actual clothes themselves. Yeah. Uh, I I always like thrift or find stuff, and then I make the patches. These blue ones on your shirt and this blue one in the back, these are called cyanotypes, and it's something I learned in photography when I was studying photography. Uh, it's basically like salt reacting to sunlight, and the sunlight <laughs> turns it blue. So you use a negative the same way you would use a negative in like a dark room to block the layers of sunlight and then make an image. And uh, I started making those on paper in school and then I started doing it on cotton and experimenting with doing it on clothes. Some people like to do direct prints to a shirt, yeah. but I've then you're like limited to white shirts. And uh, I, I prefer doing these prints on cotton sheets and then cutting them and sewing them. Cause then you can put it on whatever. Like you could have a really nice base or like, I don't know if you like, if you even, like like expensive stuff like you have like a Gucci shirt that you want to put a patch on I can do that mm-hmm. so um and these other ones I got bored of because it's only blue the name is cyanotype because it only turns out blue uh-huh. yeah. um I I wanted to do more like color stuff and I started ordering like canvas patches from mm-hmm. a printing company and they're inkjet patches so you can print anything yeah. so all these are like patches that were printed on the like on the canvas sheet? Yeah, yeah, on a canvas sheet. It's like a 30, 30 centimeter by 40 centimeter canvas sheet. If I ordered individual patches, that would be more expensive. So I just get this sheet and then cut it myself and then sew it. But yeah, I have a I have a machine at home. I don't know how to sew like a, a t-shirt. Like I can't cut out a stencil and then sew something, but I got really good at sewing patches because I do it all the time. Oh, so this is all hand sewn? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I thought it was like machine sewn. Yeah, yeah, like um, through a machine, but... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. thought you were like yeah, threading was, No, like, no, no, no. <laughs> I, this is super time consuming. Though. I did that at first. That's like the first, you know... Mm. The budget, the no money. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First like couple of years. Yeah. This, this is crazy though because I think this is very unique kind of style. Mm. When I try to do DIY stuff, I used to do it back then when I was in junior high school. And what I did was just like, you know, cutting clothes, for example, into crop tops or mm. like from jeans to shorts, those kind of stuff. So I don't have any unique style that you do, which is... Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I I was really, like, fortunate to learn about cyanotype. And when I was in school, I, like... So I went to an art school. Mm. I went to Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And I originally went for, like, illustration because mm. I wanted to make drawings that I could, like, screen print on the clothes. Oh, okay. Um, and then I just enjoyed doing photography, so I ended up switching my major and through photography i figured out how to do these prints on the cotton and then i just took off with that Mm -hmm. so uh there's so many people who want to start clothing brands yeah and um i'm not great at like graphic design or like making my own images so i think what stands out is the uniqueness of having like the the prints and patches i think uh if people see this they'll know that I made it, mm. which is really important for like having a brand or any sort of brand identity. That's true, like a patchwork. If it's horror yeah. patchwork, you think like, oh, yeah. this is infamous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. On that note, why do you decide to make the name uh, infamous? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I, um, I think it's because like, I always, oh, this is going to sound so corny, but like, I always like like the bad guy in movies. Uh-huh. Like, like my favorite character ever when I was a little kid was the Green Goblin 
Like oh, the original we, Spider-Man, Green William Goblin. Dafoe? Yeah, Willem Dafoe. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Willem yeah. the friend. He is my favorite. <laughs> I love Willem Dafoe. I'm like, something of a scientist myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude, he's just like, he was so creepy, but like way more interesting to me than like dorky Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, you know? So yeah. I like, I idolize that a lot. And, and also just my parents, like my sister getting me into punk rock and then my dad getting me into like old horror movie and old gangster movie is like i was just attracted to these like notorious figures so i think i um i just went with that yeah the infamous yeah, yeah. and it looks like so that is the logo of, of infamous yes this is uh this was drawn by my friend kestrel kestrel hendrickson and he does not usually do design like this he does like a completely different thing he like draws like for video games and stuff which oh wow is, yeah really yeah. cool but no he did a great job on the logo yeah it looks sick yeah. it kind of yeah yeah it reminds me of like almost like a venom or metallic kind of yeah uh, yeah yeah vibe to it yeah so yeah. what is your favorite print you would say or the favorite thing you've designed oh the nice thing is that since my interests are always changing and yeah. i'm always making new stuff like more recent stuff that i made is actually probably my favorite like I really enjoy this one that I made recently. My mm. friend recommended the patch because I was doing a different version of this painting for a long time. They're like, oh, you should check out this person's. But since it's vertical, it takes up so much more space on the on the jacket, and I think mm. that looks really cool. Yeah, I think that's my favorite. I've made yeah. some like personal stuff, like stuff for my friends, hidden meanings that only uh, us would understand, like stuff like that is you know sentimental. Oh, yeah. So uh, I ordered a bunch of new patches. And they're gonna get here next week. So hopefully, after next week, I'll have a new favorite thing that I made. You know. Okay. Yeah. Wait. So I thought, don't you print the? Oh, so you order the patches as you order the can the blank canvas. I to... I order the inkjet canvas ones that are like on on your hoodie right now. Oh, yeah. These blue ones I make at home. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then so then this one then you just kind of find thrifted items and then you yeah you yeah patch it up patch it yeah. Up. So sometimes I start. With the item, sometimes I, like right now I have this big bag of like thrifted clothes at home and I look at those and sometimes I like take a photo with my iPad and I look at what patches would look good on that, like what images would look good on that piece. But sometimes it's the opposite, like this one behind me, I had the patch first and then I went thrifting and I was like, what's a good garment that would fit this patch? So it goes both ways. Like okay. both of yeah. these ones that you guys are wearing, I got the clothes first and then I just looked through all the patches that I had already had at my house and just like laid them out and I was like, all right, this looks cool. And then sewed it. Mm. Is this something on the back or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I should probably show, 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 show off the, the back. Audience. Actually, I don't know what's on the back. But what, what? So the back is, uh, for people listening who cannot see the visuals, yeah. it yeah, is a right. upside down peace sign with mm. a bunch of chaos kind of drawn into it. And I got that from a show a hardcore show from a band called trash talk and i wore that shirt for a long time but then it, i grew out of it so i cut the patch off and i put oh, it wow. on the shirt yeah <laughs> the other images on the front are from the texas chainsaw massacre yeah. the classic black and white picture of him Ooh, running seven seal? yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. wow you know that yeah, nice of course, yeah wow yeah and then this one is from the seven seal. I, didn't, I didn't even realize it was seven seal yeah, yeah. um <laughs> i i ordered a bunch of seven seal patches because i wanted to do this like dickies work jacket with that Ooh. but um i sized them wrong so then i i ended up using those patches for different different stuff but yeah that's the grim reaper of death and the seven seal this is so sick yeah actually cool yeah and how do you like get like interested in all the streetwear and the garments and like figuring that out um, was there something as like naturally um because of your interest in clothes i think i think half and half i think like i was naturally attracted to it from other interests like being into punk bands and stuff and like growing up I really like skateboarding so yeah like skateboarding has always had all these like brands attached to it uh my friend was my friend got me into supreme when I was in like high school and that was definitely <laughs> supreme. Yeah. yeah that was a big one because it was like supreme literally just take images from good movies and like from artists and stuff and just put it like flat on a shirt yeah. it's not that much creativity to it so I was like <laughs> I could do this. Like, I remember looking at, like, a Supreme Dracula shirt, and I was like, ah, oh, you I know. Can make like, this. Well, at first I was like, I wish I had 70 bucks to buy this. I'm like, wait, I have $3, and, like, I know how to how to print on fabric. I could just make a Dracula shirt. Mm. So, yeah. 
I'm kind of curious about you know copyright or or kind of like if you're yeah. ever concerned that you know because you're printing all these like, yeah. yeah different IP yeah, yeah um I should be I should definitely be <laughs> concerned with copyright uh some of the stuff like I think this one is fine because it's an old painting like it's so old Frankenstein I'm not sure but that's like almost a hundred years old so. That one, I might be good. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is very strict. I never write the Texas Chainsaw Ooh. Massacre in the title or like in any of the IP because I don't want it to get taken down. But everything I make is one of one. Or like, mm. you know, 90% of what I make is one of one. So I make it and then I sell it and it's gone. I'm not like reproducing stuff enough to right. where I would get a cease and desist, I think, yet. Yes. You know? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, yeah. If this yeah. doesn't make it to the final cut, you know what happened. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. It, it could happen one day, but any publicity is good publicity. You know, yeah. like uh, Supreme, who we were just talking about, like they got sued by Louis Vuitton, and then a couple mm. years later they did a Louis Vuitton collab. So. Oh, yeah, I heard of that before, a few years ago. And then there was like a Louis Vuitton red kind of design for yeah, Supreme, yeah. right? I remember yeah, that. Yeah, they did like a, a low the box logo but they instead of it being like the LV they did like the like, S yeah, and yeah, then yeah. they got in trouble for that and then like 10 years later they got popular enough and they're like you know what yeah we'll take you back <laughs> yeah, so, so. Supreme, Supreme feels like a bit of a meme though to be honest like now yeah yeah, yeah it definitely got to yeah. that point it has the what do you call it you know the the, the gun that shoots the, the cash yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Supreme the like, <laughs> yeah 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 All you these, know but at the same time like I would be so happy if I could just like slap my logo on like dumb accessories and stuff like that. <laughs> like I would love to make like I don't know like a walking stick or like something just like <laughs> dumb that you don't need, but people are like, "Oh, that's infamous," and just buy it. That's the dream, you know? Yeah, man. True. Yeah, that's like. Yeah. What's that studio that made the design studio that made the big red boots? Uh, oh, mischief. Oh, yeah, mischief. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they just create like random drops of of just nonsensical things, but people flock to it. Like, yeah, yeah. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> And it's really cool. Though. Honestly, their designs are really... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're really good at, like, social parody, I think. Like, yeah. just, like, being ridiculous enough that people are attracted to it and not turned off. That's, like, a really fine line, you know? Mm. I mean, speaking about that, like, how do you grow your following online or how do you get the word out about these, these clothes? Something happened, which I think a lot of creatives know about, but maybe people who regularly use the app don't as much but something happened with Instagram in the last like couple of years where they switched the algorithm where people used to just see your stuff if they follow you but now it's so marketed down that no matter like however long you look at something is how long like how often you're gonna see it yeah. so people who follow me just because they like me or whatever don't see my artwork as much because they're not as interested in it mm. It's been harder with Instagram's new algorithm because only people that I like regularly DM or like regularly interact with yes. are able to see what I post on there. So I I don't think social media is as important as I used to think it was. Oh, okay. Like I used to be like, I have to make it big on Instagram or like have to blow up on TikTok. I don't touch TikTok at all, but I have to like blow oh. up somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what will make my business successful but it's like times where my instagram is like really popping and i'm getting a lot of interactions and a lot of views it doesn't necessarily translate to more sales so mm -hmm. i think that pop-ups and in-person events are way more the way to go mm. um and yeah it's just more like it's more genuine and now now instagram has like the insights right where it's like how long somebody looked at your reel or whatever you could get the same insights by doing it in person. Like, if I have a rack of clothing sitting at a pop-up, how long is somebody looking at, like, this shirt as opposed to this shirt? Like, obviously, this one has more more value to it, so I need to make more stuff like this. Oh, okay. So, you know so I mean? when you're sitting there and, yeah. and, and people are visiting your booth, you're, like, kind of taking notes of, yeah. like, mental note or whatever. Yeah, like. yeah. Like, when you're, when you're going through the rack, like three or four people stopped at the same item. They didn't buy it, but they like stopped and admired it. So it's like, I need to make more stuff like that. Mm. And I think having that more in-person data is uh, is gonna get you a lot farther than Instagram. Because Instagram can be like so misleading and so discouraging. Like, I don't know, I 
you got to play the algorithm. Yeah, and, yeah. Kind of, yeah. You know, stuck yeah. in that trap of, you know, creating content, making sure that people interact with it. And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I know if I'm like more annoying, I'll have more <laughs> success on Instagram. Like if I'm like, you won't believe what I did to make this. Or like, <laughs> you know, if I, if I like stop doing like movies that I like, like the Seven Steel and just was like, oh, I made this Pulp Fiction shirt. Like I could probably sell a lot more and like be a lot more popular. But Fair enough, yeah. I don't know. I just like, I, I have too much pride, I guess. I mean, that's not why you started it as well, right? Yeah. You started yeah. it for yourself. So yeah, exactly. The brand remains true to yourself. Yeah. Mm. And I think like people respect that authenticity, you know. Mm. Um, also, I think that there is three reasons why people buy clothing from like a smaller designer. It's either because they like you, they like the people who wear it, and then the third, which is probably the smallest, is that they actually like to design. Like, I think Ooh. it's really hard to sell things to people that you don't know when you're starting out. So mm. whenever I get a sale to somebody who is just some rando off the internet, like, that is a huge, huge W for me. Or, or at a pop-up, like, somebody that I didn't meet is just, like, buys it because they think it's cool. Because usually when you start out, it's your friends and, like, your family yeah. and stuff like that who want to buy stuff. Mm. Um, and Grailed has gotten me a lot more sales than like Instagram and stuff like that. Grailed? Grailed. Grailed is for like reselling streetwear, like Supreme and stuff like that. Oh. So, but you could put on like custom stuff and uh, and those people are willing to pay more, which is cool. <laughs> I, I guess it's the audience, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have a unique one. Yeah. You should put a link here somewhere so that they can know. Because I've never heard of Grailed. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll put the link for my like. Japanese store and like Etsy, which will, which oh, will yeah. help me, but like, For sure. like Grailed, I charge a lot more because the audience is different and they take <laughs> a bigger processing fee mm. and stuff. So right. don't don't buy from Grailed if you buy from me. Buy from Etsy. Yeah. Buy from Etsy. Etsy or DM me. Uh, uh, if you DM me, it's the cheapest because no <laughs> other company is gonna get their money. Like I don't have to pay Etsy. I don't have to pay the base. Mm. Like just DM me and I'll send it. And you can see your whole catalog from Instagram. Price. Yeah, 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 okay. for sure. And um. And those other sites are fine there. Guys, we are upping up our short form content game this year. So if you don't want to miss that out, please follow us at Passion Project JP on Instagram and TikTok. Exclusive content just for you guys. I guess you thrift a lot of stuff from um, Japan. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get kind of your expert advice on thrifting because... Um, we thrift a lot. We, th um, we live always. on 2nd Street. Yeah, like, oh, really? Literally, uh, my lifeblood, everything I own is almost 90% yeah. Second Street. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I can... I feel like a lot of people, like, especially, like, people visiting Japan are like, oh, my God, thrift stores must be amazing. Like, I must go there and I could see, like, all these great Japanese designers or, like, you know, like, kimono and stuff like that, I guess. I don't know what people <laughs> have in their head. Yeah. But um, it is not that. It's, like, a lot of American... Oh, yeah. A, a lot of American old stuff that's, like priced way higher it's like you go to a thrift store and you see a hoodie and you're like oh sweet like i'm american so it's like i used to have this hoodie and then it's like 90 dollars <laughs> i'm like oh my god like so oh what's my advice for thrifting second street second street rules but there's some second streets that are really good and some second streets that are so so yeah um, i think the, the second streets that are not in the city center so like suburban second yeah. streets yeah. those are like gold mine yeah yeah, yeah yeah definitely um there's a there's a wholesale store in Ichinomiya, and I think they have one in, in Nagoya too called Three Piece. And you have to spend at least 5,000 yen when you go there, but it's like so, so, so much clothes and it's very, very cheap. Uh, I went there, I followed their Instagram and they had like a half off sale one day. Ooh. And I spent 9,000 yen, which is like 70 US dollars, like 65 US dollars. Uh, and I got 10 items, including these pants that I'm wearing, and uh, a Burberry coat. I got a Burberry. Burberry coat? Yeah, I got a Burberry trench coat that I'm going to customize and I'm going to sell, but I haven't yet. This Just wait. <laughs> 10 items, and how, how much did you spend again? It was like 9,000 yen, 9, so like oh, 7 wow. 800 That's per crazy. item. That's crazy. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's like 7 to 8 USD an item or so. I probably shouldn't have said that because I'm trying to resell this stuff. I'll oh, be like, wait, wait. wait you only spend You don't know which yeah. item is. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's price varies, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, besides that, uh, Yahoo Auctions is really good. Yahoo mm. Auctions is good for finding cheaper stuff and Mercardi, but... 
Yahoo Auctions, if you pay attention, because it's a bidding thing, you could get stuff for like really cheap. Um, mm-hmm. And because the yen is so low, it, it's, it's nice fair. to buy it right now. But you, Yahoo Auctions is just in Japanese. Yeah. Maybe they have an English website. I don't know. You probably can Google Translate or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. So three piece. Uh, suburban Second Street, yeah. Yahoo Auctions. There's a there's a shop in uh, Osaka that's really good too called Jabber, J A B B E R. That place is so so cheap and like Carhartt Dicky is like nice workwear and it's like all every everything that they have in the store is one thousand, two thousand, or three thousand yen, and it's like nice Ooh. stuff. So that's yeah. that's a really good good spot too. That's been good. to Osaka so many times, but never really yeah. been yeah. to that place. Is it like in the main city area? Uh, it's like, it's a little bit, it's like a 10, 20 minute walk from Shinsaibashi. Okay. Uh, so yeah. it's, it's pretty close to like the center. Okay. Mm. Yeah. 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 Nagoya, I, I don't know many good places. The The second street in Osu is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I usually just go to the second street. There's one really near um, Yagoto, like... Um, Second Street near Yagoto. Mm. Yeah. That one is pretty nice. Yeah, mm. it has quite a few stuff. And the one near Kakozan. Mm. Yeah, that one is yeah. pretty big. Yeah. But you have to spend a lot of time for thrift shopping though because, I mean, good pieces are not uh, like visible. Mm. Yeah. You yeah. have to spend time. Yeah, and for I sure. get tired. I get tired so yeah, fast. I get too. like, I get worn out and <laughs> I just like, like shift through the racks with like my whole hand, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I usually try to, I feel like you could, you could tell the quality, like the thickness of something. Yeah. So I usually just try to like go for those first. Yeah. But sure. I get I get really excited when I find something good. But I'm sitting on so many thrifty clothes right now that mm-hmm. I gotta kinda chill out. For sure, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. You can kind of tell. So like I always just touch the like the sleeve just to see yeah. like the what do you call it? The GSM. Yeah. yeah, yeah try yeah, to get yeah, a yeah, for you sure. know GSM? No uh, idea. I don't know what's uh what's the the full it's basically like know. the thickness of the hoodie mm-hmm. or like a like a you know jacket or whatever, yeah. It's yeah. basically like the thicker, the more kind of luxurious. It's yeah. Really? yeah, yeah. Like the heavy, heavy weight kind of stuff. Heavy weight, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Let's say we were to start like a streetwear brand, mm. kind of. Can you take us like, through the process of how you might want to start in this day and age? I think the first thing you should do is just make clothes for yourself. Like I think that's so so important. Like to have a real physical thing that you made and there's there's many different ways you could go about that you could find a local printing company to like print your design on a shirt or whatever you can just hand draw bleach like any if you want to try screen printing that's pretty hard but like (laughs) try to set up screen printing at your house like spend the money and the time to make it a hobby but don't expect to like make any sales or anything Mm. right away like i think that you should you should have stuff that you can put on and feel confident going out in yeah before you start selling stuff and and you should also surround yourself with people who are both creative and honest like who will be like that's fire or like (laughs) that sucks (laughs) (laughs) you need i you can't just be around like yes people all the time yeah um, like I don't know, me being nine, ten years old and stapling that Frankenstein paper to my shirt, like I got flame for that, but then that just made me want to like make it better. And uh oh. I think I, I did. And now I have something that like people react to in a positive way and that I feel confident wearing. So work in real space. Like so many people they only make like mock ups and they try to do everything digitally. But I think mm. it's it's so important to like like so many people will do a mock up and then they order from the company after they already got pre-orders or something, and then they, mm-hmm. s- they send it out to people. But mm-hmm. then there might be some com- some problem with the company or, like, the quality isn't what they expected or, like, it washes out really quickly. Uh, so make sure you have, like, a physical item in hand before you start trying to sell it. Because uh, you don't want to, like, give someone a shirt and then it just becomes, like, their pajamas right away or something you know you want to like i feel the best when i make something and i'm wearing it and i'm like i can't eat this cheeseburger right now because i might stain my shirt or like i'm not gonna go out in this one because it's gonna smell smoky like when i take care of it like it's an expensive item that i would have bought from a different brand that's when i know i made something good so Mm. make stuff for yourself and then once you hit that quality mark 
then you can try to start marketing it to people. Yeah. 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 Just like a presentation, we we did a workshop today about presentation, and, mm. and um, the lecturer said that if you enjoy it, then other people will enjoy it as well. Yeah, for right? sure. So for it sure. applies for the shirts as well. Yeah. Do you have any uh, ideas? I have I have one idea that, but unfortunately, it's like it's copyrighted. For but I think we so sick. Yeah. Not unfortunately, just do it. It's so sick, <laughs> but I was thinking like, <laughs> just say it. Do I really want like? Really nice looking Jujutsu Kaisen merch. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Acid wash Jujutsu Kaisen merch. Sorry, yeah. that's super basic, but like, yeah. uh, or just anime merch in general that is yeah. like not like too, you know. I think yeah. Uniqlo has some. I'm not a big fan of like some mm. Uniqlo designs, like kind of like mm. cringe to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if it's like a really good quality, kind of like oh, almost street style acid wash kind of uh, yeah. Yeah. look, I think you look super sick. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, merchandise always sells. I, I would say. Yeah. 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 Oh, jewelry. Yeah. Uh, do you make um, any like, no, I've never, I've never, yeah. I've never tried jewelry. Um, oh, well, I actually never wear jewelry, so I think that's why I've never tried it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a, that like, part of that comes from like skateboarding because like if I skate um, and I like, I have like a necklace banging into my neck, I don't like it or like, I get sweaty and my watch falls off. Like, I don't know, um, jewelry has never really been my thing, yeah. but it'd be cool. It'd yeah. be cool, yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine the infamous as like a ring, just like a yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be sweet if it like curled around, like that. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Be, I think it look good. Yeah, yeah that's that'd it, be yeah. really really yeah. cool. Um, yeah. And there's so much you could do now with like 3D, mm-hmm. like 3D. Uh, what what's the word I'm looking for? 3D printing. Printing. Yeah, not printing like like the the software that you use, like 3D sculpting uh, and blender? like models uh. and stuff like that. Yeah. Like it's really accessible, and I think a lot of people could do it. So true, true. that'd be really cool. Mm. Yeah. The next thing I want to get into, like clothing wise, uh, would be chain stitching, which is like, it's basically like embroidery like this, but you could do it yourself. Like you could draw something and then you just do with the machine. Like you go through and kind of, you're, you're basically like drawing with a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. I would really like to do that because then that just opens up a whole nother world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And do you need a special machine or it's just your sewing machine? You need a special, like a special sewing machine. Okay. And uh, the thing is, like I saw some online that were like pretty cheap, like, you know, 100, 200 bucks. But you have to like put it into the table. You have to like cut out a table and rig it to be like part of the sewing machine. That's so DIY. Yeah. That's so crazy, like I'm not, I'm DIY with like clothes, but like I can't really handle a saw or anything <laughs> that well. Yeah, that sounds like something you can, our cameraman yeah. will yeah. be interested in. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet. He <laughs> loves furniture. Oh, nice. Yeah, we should. I used to make furniture back in. Back oh, back in the day. nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's a, thank you for saying that. That reminded me. Another good piece of advice is to like, always talk about your interest and like stuff that you're into and stuff that you want to do because you never know when somebody is like a handyman who can help you build a chain stitching table. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so literally you cut out like a, like a square and then you just put yeah, the Yeah, yeah, you got to measure out wow. like how big the machine is and then put it into the... Chain stitching. <laughs> yeah. Would you ever make your own designs, you think? Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've tried. I'm pretty proficient in Photoshop, but not when it comes to like text and like graphic design I took a graphic design I took a typography class in college and I was like so focused on other classes that I like I think I got a C in it like I just wasn't I was not paying enough attention and uh, I remember we had to watch a documentary we had to watch a whole movie about like Helvetica just to type and I was so bored like you know I just it was not my thing but I really regret not paying more attention in that class because it would have helped me a lot uh Graphic design is one of those things where I compare myself to other graphic designers and I'm like, oh, I'm not there yet. So I would also like to collab with other graphic designers in the Mm -hmm. future. Like I would love to find somebody that I could just like hire, but I'm not at the point where I'm making enough money to hire somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, but yeah, one day. Uh, Yeah. Do you ever think this will be your full time kind of your transition that, out of teaching and going you know into this full time that would be the dream that would be really cool uh i think the way to get there is to have is to build up like loyalty in customers like a loyal customer base people who buy from you almost every time you drop something right now i have like two people who do that but two is better than nothing yep. you know yep. true, like two true. people who consistently when i make something new they are almost always to hop on the drop Um, and I think since I'm living in Japan, uh, and you know, most of my Instagram posts are written in English and most of the events that I go to are pretty like 
gaijin or like foreigner focused mm. um it's been hard to get into the japanese market yeah so when i get a random sale and it's like from a japanese person i'm stoked uh but once i build a loyal customer base i, I might be able to because i i don't make stuff consistently enough to make enough profit since i'm doing right. one of ones like mm. i get like this big stack where i have like at home i have this whole bin full of like 30 40 pieces that i made and i'm almost in debt from making those and then once i sell those off then i'll be like all right time to make new stuff okay so once i'm once i'm in this workflow where like my it's not going like supply demand supply demand like once it's like on a steady rate then Mm -hmm. i think i might be able to chill out yeah and it would be really cool to do this full time yeah yeah speaking of that like um you mentioned earlier that you usually go to like um how to say uh, markets pop-ups yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so do you have any like pop-ups that you usually go to in Nagoya nothing consistent I've seen a lot of like flea markets or like secondhand markets that I haven't been able to get into yet but mm. there's some that do it like you know every couple months or something like that but it's usually for those vintage shops and stuff mm-hmm. like places with an established name so I haven't gotten into that yet I've been going to more like kind of art parties that people oh. like foreigners have been putting together. I put together one myself, and that was fun. But uh, I, I don't know enough people in Nagoya yet to have like a big turnout. Mm. So uh, I'm, whenever I meet other creative people, I you know try to connect with them as much as well as I can. And uh, this next week, I'm gonna do one in Osaka. I met the the person who runs it like so briefly after just this like long long day in Osaka uh and I was leaving like I we talked for like five minutes but luckily you know went back and forth via dms and Mm. uh I got myself in there but I'm hoping to meet more people through that event and like branch out in Osaka um there's also a lot of like vintage markets and stuff like that and flea markets in uh Tokyo so maybe I'll move there one day there's a lot going on I've seen I've been looking up flea markets in Nagoya and there are some but it looks like more like family oriented and mm. I don't know I, I had a feeling as well I mean for, <laughs> it's, it's just my image but I do feel like Osaka or, or Tokyo has the kind of vibe more than than, than, than Nagoya people here yeah. they dress more formal yeah or conservative yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 you have like like in in Osu if you go around Osu there's there's some people who like dress pretty pretty funky like yeah, pretty yeah. wacky and that's that's fun sakai i feel like is more like people wearing like high-end stuff like they just yeah. buy that's stuff because it's like Brain. expensive yeah. but my real goal is to get consignment where like i give my clothes to a shop and they sell it mm. and then they take a percent i did that when i was living in minneapolis and that was sweet because i honestly just did like throwaways like stuff that i made that i just had and uh and I would totally forget about it. And then the month would roll around and they're like, oh, you got 300 bucks because you sold some stuff. And I was like, oh, sweet. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that would be really, really good. But I think it'd be a lot harder to do in Japan because like that takes so much relationship building. Yeah, yeah. So if they want to find your store or if they want to follow you, where can they find you? Uh, I think through Instagram is the best. Yep. Instagram, www.instagram.com <laughs> backslash infamous artworks uh there i have like the little link tree with my my shops on it uh i also have a facebook page that only my dad and uncle comment on <laughs> <laughs> so if you're like 40 years old and you use facebook still you could do that i have a tiktok but i don't really use that so, dude, yeah. i think you should get on tiktok though because yeah. Dude, yeah these kinds of clothes i think will probably fly on tiktok dude mm. my tiktok i just my phone is like a iphone like four not not a four but it's an old iphone uh-huh. uh and it just like feels like it's going to physically combust every time I try to open TikTok. It's like way too much processing power for it. And the algorithm doesn't know me at all. So it's like all it knows is that I'm a foreigner in Japan. So all of my feed is just like Indian and Thai reels. <laughs> and I don't understand any of it. So I just like I get out there and I'm like scared and confused. And I just get off. I always try to do like. When I post something on Instagram, I'll, I'll throw the photos on uh, TikTok. Yeah. But because I don't care about it, so like at all. I always throw a really baity title like 
I stole this from someone. And it's like a jacket that I made or <laughs> something like that. So I'm having fun with it. Yeah, yeah. It's experimental ground TikTok. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Yeah. So Instagram, TikTok, and the link tree is in your Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inst- Instagram is the best one. Sick, mm. yeah. yeah. And if you want to follow us, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, at Passion Project J- JP, mm. or our YouTube. On Passion Project Japan. Yeah, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Shane, for, for coming on the podcast yeah, and sharing your, your advice. Yeah, yeah. thanks, for, thanks for having me. Check it Peace. out. Check out the drip. Bye. Bye.